I'm your host, Farrah June, and I am so excited because tonight is season four of Fahrenheit TV, and we're here to continue to give you content that will uplift your soul. Tonight, we have two incredible artists in the building that are going to share a little bit about their journey and share some of their gifts right on our stage. Coming to you live in five, four, three, two, one. Stay tuned. Do you need content that inspires you? <laughs> Talent that is simply too dope to describe? Welcome. Welcome to Fahrenheit TV. Fahrenheit TV. Fahrenheit TV is a live monthly variety show that showcases people's greatness through narratives and artistic expression. We're back with a brand new season of content that will uplift your soul. Tune into our live episodes here on BNN TV or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to follow us on social media to keep up with all our latest news. We hope that you'll tune in. Welcome to another episode of Fahrenheit TV. Again, I am your host and creator, Fair June, and I am so, so excited tonight because it is season four. Can you believe it? It's been four seasons of Fahrenheit TV, and on this stage, we've had so many incredible leaders, artists, just um, amazing community members who are doing so much here in Boston, in our city, and really uplifting our community and empowering and inspiring all of them. And tonight, I am so humbled. So proud to have one of my dear friends on stage who is a multi-talented artist. He does it all. He cooks, he, he does art, he uplifts the community, and he just does so much work that really matters and has a purpose. And tonight, he's here to talk a little bit about his journey and his new initiative that we're going to find out. So I would like to welcome to the stage my friend, the one of the dopest artists I'm lucky to know, Mr. Jeremy Harrison, welcome to Fahrenheit TV. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yes, of course, Glad so how have you been? I've been well, yeah. um, just working hard and trying to live pretty much. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you've been living. You know, obviously, we don't work together anymore, but I like am able to see how people are living through Instagram. And every time I'm on the gram, you are living it up, really. You are, and not only that, but you're really like creating work that not only is like eye-catching, but it's empowering and it has a message behind it and just like, Everything about it is just so dope. So I just wanted to get right thank into you, that you. because that's how I've admired you for all these years. So how did you get into art? Like, what was that moment that, if you could remember, since it's a throwback Thursday, that moment that sparked in your mind that said, you know what, I'm really good at this. Like, I'm, a, I'm an artist. Okay. Um, well, it's funny that that's the first question because I just finished... Uh, my art blog like two nights ago oh nice and i started it with the story of like how i started drawing period yeah but um as fast as i can um I, fourth grade i think 10 years old was wow. the first time i drew anything mm -hmm. that i can remember yeah and that's when i was like yeah i kind of want to do this yeah forever mm -hmm. um but it, it was a halloween mask making contest oh, on paper that's plates fun. yeah yeah, yeah. And uh, my oldest brother, he was drawing at the time already. So I begged him to like draw on this paper plate yeah. so I could take it to class and say I did it yeah. and, you know, win the contest. Yeah, yeah. So he did a werewolf face for me and like dripping blood out the fangs. Was this like inspired by like Thriller kind of? Or I, just, he like, was his just, own thing? he was always drawing like Conan, Conan the Barbarian type characters. Oh, okay, okay. That was his warfare thing. Warfare and ripping <laughs> body parts everywhere. So. Yeah. I thought it was cool, but I thought he was like a little crazy or weird because like every <laughs> picture was like Titans and Barbarians yeah. fighting. But I, he was, it was good. They yeah. were good pictures. I mean, he's really, he could go into the comic book game, you know what I mean? And, so. and he could have started off early. Yeah. He was more of a, a sports fanatic, okay. but I think this was, he was just, could do it, so he did it. Yeah, so um, obviously art, are like art, artsy like, you know, skills run in the family. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah, like mm -hmm. um, the family is... Um, big on music, and mm -hmm. a lot of the family's big on uh, visual arts as well. So, That's dope. Yeah. So obviously you got that greatness in your DNA. Yeah, it's, for sure. it's, it's in the DNA. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about your upbringing? Like, what, how do you, what would you say, um, how has Boston shaped you into the man, the artist that you are today? Um, well, I, I, Boston is, is a tough, it's a tough city to yeah. be in. Um, I've been here, born and raised, Dorchester, my whole life. 
Um, I pretty much don't know nothing else besides Boston. Yeah. Um, mm. So it, it's a blessing and it's a curse because, like, yeah. you know, it's, we got the sunshine, but there's definitely the rainy days and the oh, bloom. Oh, yeah, the disrespectful weather and all yeah, of that. Yeah, the disrespectful yeah. weather, the disrespectful <laughs> people, but then you got the oh, nice yeah. people. And it's, no, it's, it's like a, a nice, of yeah, nice everything. combination. So, um, strangely enough, Boston has helped me remain open minded, and mm -hmm. I've been open minded for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. um, and I know this because that's what a lot of people would say. You're, you're very open-minded and you're patient. Oh, yeah, definitely. And for them, I understand now as an adult, like, mm -hmm. why that was so, like, fascinating because, like, there's just, nowadays, it's just fast-paced. Oh, yeah, a especially lot of, in the like, East Coast. We're all fast-paced. Yeah, it's just a lot of rude. A yeah. lot of rudeness going on. A lot of, <laughs> oh, like, yeah. listen, I'm just going to work. Leave me alone. Yeah. And I just want to get this shift done. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I, I've, I've been patient. Since awesome. like, but I, I come from a large family. I'm the, the the fourth oldest out of eight children. Eight? Wow! Yeah. You have yeah. a lot of siblings. And same mother and same father. And I love what? like stressing that because yeah. it's like it's rare it's like to hear. taboo nowadays yeah. when I like bring it up. But um, so I'm proud of that. Yeah, that's um, awesome. I like that you have such a close knit family. Yeah, large family. It's like rare to hear that nowadays. Like you know, like 20 years ago, you but oh yeah, you have like 14 yeah, brothers and sisters. Yeah, that was the norm. Yeah, now, now you're like, like oh, that gosh, sounds expensive. Like, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's very expensive. Yeah. But um, yeah. So with everybody, since we were like. I pretty much am sure, like, my oldest brother didn't actually leave the household mm -hmm. until, like, after high school. So wow, that's awesome. That's just all of us yeah. in the same house all the time. Yeah. You guys just, are tight. It's yeah. Sick. yeah. I love we, that. We are. We are. Wow. You guys, like, sound like a soul food movie or something. Like, I, we, I love it. You could be. Yeah, yeah, you could be. So, um, you know, I, well, I was working with you, and also I started to see that, you know, you're an incredible artist. And I was like, oh, his work is dope. But then when I started seeing, like, your real work, I was like, oh, man, like, I'm working next to, like, a legend over here. Like, my God. And, you know, I remember, like, having conversations with you, like, asking, like, advice because I'm a growing artist and, like, just wanted to know, like, how does your mind process? How do you, you know, develop these skills? And, again, your patience was, is a good, great blessing, a great skill to, for anybody to have. You are always giving me, like, you know, advice and all that. So I know you're a multimedia because you do, like, other than graffiti, which you're going to talk about, um, you do other types of like work, like you do portraits really amazingly. Like, so how did your work kind of grow? Like, what made you start from like doing like you know stuff that you remember in the fourth grade to progressing into graffiti? Can you talk a little bit about yeah. that journey? Um, I honestly did not know what graffiti was in fourth grade. I just drew that werewolf face mm -hmm. for like months, <laughs> and then I found in the hallway. Um, same, same fourth grade, I found in the hallway a small comic book, and it was the Alien vs. Predator. Oh, yeah. And I yeah. loved the Predator. Oh, yeah. I loved, I loved the Alien and the Predator. Yeah, I yeah. was like, it blew my mind that they, they were together. Yeah. And I fanboyed out real quick, yeah. and then I was like, <laughs> I don't know who this is, but I'm taking it. Yeah. And the rest of fourth grade, I just drew the Alien and the Predator, like, oh, that's dope. over and over and over. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until... Well, 97 was when I copied my first tags. Oh, okay. And um, it was Vex and Devs mm -hmm. off of Blue Hill Avenue. And I would pass the tags every Sunday morning going to church with the family. <laughs> and I was in the drawing mm -hmm. already. And I don't know what about the tags that just had me copy it. Mm -hmm. Like, I made sure I seen the tags every Sunday. Okay. And, um, Something about it, like, just, like, yeah, sparked I, you. Like, I guess because yeah, it was their high up. In. And there was, at the time, a young and I'm just like, why? Yeah, like, why, why is this here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so years down the line, in 97, I, I copied those tags. And my cousin mm -hmm. came to, like, hang out with me, uh, my cousin Lloyd. Mm -hmm. And he was doing graffiti. I don't know how long he's been doing graffiti. Yeah. But at the time, he found out I was drawing. He was already into the, the graffiti game. Yeah. And, um... He seen the two tags after he had flipped through my little folder of sketches or whatnot, mm -hmm. and he was like, "You know what this is? You know who the, who you know who these people are?" And yeah. I was like, "Absolutely not." Yeah, but and there's something just, about it that yeah, you know you yeah. like. So yeah. he he automatically knew I had I had the graph bug because okay. like it's just random writing. There's yeah. so many signs and logos all over the place, yeah. but these little two little scribbles mm -hmm. was the only things I was copying. So yeah. he knew I had the the graffiti bug. 
awesome. And um, he just broke the game down to me, and like wow. I was hooked ever since. Like, Thank yeah. God for your cousin, because yeah. ever since then, you have been creating amazing art. And we're going to take a short break to learn more about that art and the new initiative that you're taking. So, guys, please stay tuned because you don't want to miss out. We'll be right back. Fahrenheit TV. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Fahrenheit TV. Fahrenheit TV and on our stage today is Jeremy Harrison, the multi-talented artist. And before the break, we were talking a little bit about what inspired him to get into art and graffiti. And so I wanted to continue that conversation. So shout out to your cousin Lloyd because, you know, yes. he, he put you more into the game of graffiti. And ever since then, it's been just blossoming. So what have you been doing since then? So once you knew what to do, did you just start making art everywhere? Like, how did that work? Yeah, it was it was pretty much torture for my mother because every dresser, every cabinet, mm -hmm. refrigerator, I was just scribbling everywhere. everywhere. And then, oh like, my gosh! Two of my brothers, I convinced them to like scribble everywhere with me. Mm -hmm. So it was just us three just <laughs> running around scribbling on stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was like the rest of '97. 1998 okay. was when I really like got out mm -hmm. into like the city scene more. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that's when I just started meeting more like graffiti the artists. artists yeah. yeah, and um, my first graffiti group was NBN, mm -hmm. Newborn Nation, and we were based mm -hmm. in Mattapan. Oh, nice! Like that—that that was it for me. I thought yeah. I was the man yeah. ever since. Like since then, like I mean, it's you been, still are. You make yeah. incredible art. You know what I mean? So, I, and it lasts. It, it's not just like something that's scribble anymore. Now yeah. you're making masterpieces. Yeah, and it's so. it's due to the motivation of those guys mm -hmm. back in 98 cuz they awesome. they put the rules in me and they instilled it in me. Yeah. From it's like the a jump. brotherhood of yeah. artists. Yeah. That's definitely. awesome. So I wanted to ask you a little bit more about graffiti because you know it has it could have a negative notion, you know, like of it being only as vandalism. And especially like I'm thinking about when graffiti was first introduced in like United States and like you know there was like even like the New York mayor at the time like had a ban against graffiti and like um, well-known artists at the time or people around just didn't see it didn't see street art as art it just seen it as vandalism so despite all of that you know negative backlash what inspired you to continue to stay with this you know um, art form pretty much because it was like an against the system culture yeah yeah um, like I, I'm coming from like a Christian home and my parents were, my father was quiet. Yeah. And my mother was so like, this is not of the church. Yeah, yeah. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. And by that time I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just so sick of that. You just like, want to be rebel rebel like, I just want to go and do what I want to do. Yeah. So that, that for me was just like, it was an adrenaline rush every time because it was out of my norm. Mm -hmm. And my norm was just school, church, home, yeah. homework, repeat. Yeah. I know, so, and that gets boring, especially for artists. Like, yeah. we need stuff to, like, break it up. We yeah, need something, definitely. like, exciting to look forward to, you and know? It, and it helped me get out of my, like, quiet shell. Oh, that's good. I was so isolated, even with all of my siblings. Mm -hmm. Like, when they would go to the basketball court, I'm um, in the room in the corner drawing. Yeah. And um, so I was really, like, anti-social. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I started getting down with the graffiti group and going to places and meeting more artists and stuff, mm -hmm. like, I just started... Give you like Open a voice it up and, stuff. and yeah, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I mean, now that I'm looking at like you know Boston, street art has really increased here, and it's beautiful to see because I used to be so bored walking down the street, like man, there's like nothing else to look at that mm -hmm. much. So now that I'm seeing like you know more murals are being put up and stuff, like why do you think like murals are important? Like why do you think that's you know important for people to see that now that street art is being more embraced and celebrated? Yeah, it's it's important for the community. Um, Cause it's vibrant. Mm 
Mm -hmm. You know, everything right now is just, is getting all just gray, gray, gray. Every business, every yeah. storefront is just gray. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just, it just brings like a damper, dull feeling yeah. to the city, especially like the lower income neighborhoods that sure. are like falling in line with the whole gray. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's something good to look at. Mm -hmm. um, I live in um, Dorchester, mm -hmm. that little borderline between Dorchester, Roxbury, that little, yeah. whatever. But um, my house is like right around the corner from one of Pro Black's Breathe Life Oh my murals. God, Pro Black is like that's, a legend. That's Big Brother. Yeah, for so, sure. So, um, you know, I see that every day. Mm -hmm. And every day I look at it. Yeah. You know, I, I, it's to the point where I know where which design and what colors are wherever. Yeah. Like I know it back and forth. I can close my eyes and be like, oh, look at the star at the top right. Oh that one God. is extra. But it's, mm -hmm. it's something to look at besides like another abandoned building, yeah. another vacant parking lot, mm -hmm. or just another storefront that's unwelcoming mm -hmm. to, you know, yeah. the community. The community, yeah. So it's, it's like it's life. Important. Like, oh my yeah, God. I, I totally agree with you all the way. And that's why I think art is like a universal language, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because you don't have to be from that community to see how beautiful and empowering that mural makes you feel. And that's awesome that artists like you have that power to do so. So speaking of all that, what inspired you to start this new initiative called Back Against the Wall? Can you tell us a little bit more about it and yeah. you know how that all started? So um, the Back Against the Wall initiative is pretty much, um, it's my legal street art graffiti wall initiative. Mm -hmm. So my goal is pretty much to get as many um, either storefronts or community centers or just properties in the Mattapan Dorchester area mm -hmm. to kind of let you know, me and my team come through and bring the community through to revitalize yes. the neighborhood with, you know, visual art pretty much. And it's very much needed. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. needed. Um, and it, it all sparked from, um, well, I call it my Bruce Lee syndrome. <laughs> like, what is this syndrome? So I don't know anything about it. So my Bruce Lee syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, tell me it's, more. It's, so Bruce Lee learned mm -hmm. how to like tangle because like, Students at the school he was with was was challenging him and saying like you can't you can't tangle because this is not your people's yeah way of life so mm -hmm. you you don't know how to dance yeah and he was like I can dance and I'm gonna dance better than you nice so yeah I I replied to you know numerous art festivals and you know the large scale mural events that happened and I applied to a few and I was denied mm -hmm. um, some. I was denied, but all of the, the, the emails ended with, you're a very incredible artist. <laughs> Which is, it's like a slap face, like, oh, we can't use you, but you're still great. You're still I mean, great. You're still great. You're like, am I really, Maybe though? Maybe next year. Maybe, yeah. And, you know. Yeah, I know how that feels. It, so, it can hurt a little bit, that rejection, and it, you know? And it does. And it, it's like, especially when it's in your community. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. like, you've been staring at that wall for years, mm -hmm. and then an out-of-towner gets hired to paint that yeah. wall. And it's yeah. just like, a, oh, you just kicked me right in the stomach. Yeah. So um, that was the motivation for it. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly, like I always wanted to do an art business, mm -hmm. but the large scale wall aspect. Yeah, like outside of commissions and stuff. Yeah, that you know yeah, that do. was just, it was just like a dream, like a distant, yeah. You know, hopefully that'll come someday. It's not distant anymore. Yeah, now, now it's, it's just it's like, no, this is the forefront. Yeah. I'm going to make this happen. Of Nobody's course. stopping me because, like, I have something to offer. And I'm in your neighborhood, so you don't need to fly somebody Buddy down. Yeah. Just come around the corner and knock on my door, and we'll sip some coffee and talk about this wall. Exactly. Um, so that's pretty much the motivation. Mm -hmm. Um how do we support this? Because this is needed. We want to support it. How do we support Back Against the Initiative? Um, so there is the Instagram page, mm -hmm. which is um, B-A-T-W-B-O-S. Mm -hmm. And if you go on the page in my profile, there is the, the, a GoFundMe link. Mm -hmm. So there's a GoFundMe page. People can donate whatever they can to that page. Mm -hmm. Um, if people is like, I want to support, but I don't, I don't got the dollars to throw at you right now. You got paint brushes, you got old bucket paint that's been sitting in your basement. You got rollers, you got ladders, mm -hmm. anything that like can help me mm -hmm. get my team up to a wall and yeah. create, like send it my way. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 
I mean, and I hope everybody's listening and you will support this because this is needed. Again, like you said, murals are important because they help, you know, revitalize the, the city and the, and the neighborhood and really just in, like, I don't know, empower the, the community, I think, too. Definitely. So speaking of all of that, so we're going to support Back Against the Initiative, Back Against the Wall Initiative on, Go, on GoFundMe and on Instagram. Yes. And um, do you guys have anything coming up that, like, we could look forward to for yes. 2020? Yes. Um, April 18th. The time is not definite yet, mm -hmm. but the way my energy be looking nowadays yeah. is probably going to be like 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. ish. Okay. But um, April 18th at Art Plug, um, they just changed their location, so I can send you all of that information. Definitely, yeah. But um, they're going to be hosting the first fundraiser for the Back Against the Wall. Yes, this so, is awesome. Yeah, it's, they just uh, they just reached out to me today. Mm -hmm. And they were like, hey, what's up? You ain't talked to us in a while. And I was like, oh, I'm yeah. about to be on this TV show tonight. Yeah. I'm going to throw y'all out there. And yeah, definitely. I love all here. of that. Look how so, the universe works. Yeah, it's like, the universe yeah. is like, you're going to be here. And let's have some other people know that you're going to exactly. be here and all the things. Exactly. So April 18th, April is this 18th. an event that people could come to? Yeah, it's open to all ages, mm -hmm. all communities, if you can get down there. Mm -hmm. um, Are you guys doing like live art on this spot? It's going to be. It's going to be more of like, well, we're planning a, a auction, a live auction for one. Mm -hmm. um, there's also my team members. I, I told them, y'all better pump out some canvases and all that stuff. So there is going to be live, like art, uh, art showing. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a live performance. Oh, that's dope. And um, there's going to be food, like yes. appetizers. Yay! And all of this is, everybody who's helping me out is pretty much my graffiti group. Nice. My son and his mama. Yeah, and and so, I wanted to talk about yeah. that, too, because your son, like I said, you know, this greatness lies in your DNA, and you pass that to your son. So your son be also be there with you creating all of these yeah, murals and graffiti, definitely. and it's just beautiful to see. Yeah. How is that for you as a father to it's, see your young, your young? That's probably my most proudest moments is mm -hmm. when he's, like, sitting on the ground or in a little tent mm -hmm. and, like, with his frustrated face, like, hurry up, dad, <laughs> <laughs> while I'm painting, because it's like, those are what he's, to me, those are what he's going to remember. Mm -hmm. And um, I, and I'm still in that that business mind frame, and I'm like, um, the past weekend, me, my brother, and my son got flown out to Miami to go yeah, paint. Yeah, I saw that the, Instagram. Um, yeah, to go paint a smoke shop. Mm -hmm. um, I showed my son around, and I showed him the boss's office. He went to the office, he sat in the boss's chair, and like his whole demeanor, his whole aura just yeah. changed. He you sat up right and he could be. Yeah, yeah, and that that right there was like, yes. For me, that was like total enlightenment, and that's yeah. like my goal. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so my goal. I wanted to ask you, what advice would you give to artists who may be like, you know, drowning in a sea of self-doubt? I like to say, you know, because right. I know all of us artists have those moments, even, you know, professional artists like you sometimes, you have those moments where you're like, mm, I don't know about this art thing. Like, yeah. what advice would you give to those artists? Because um, I, I, I feel like that all the time still, mm -hmm. no matter how many times people say, yo, you're awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, there's, you're always going to have those moments where you're just like, I don't feel like I'm enough. Um, so I wrote this down specifically. Yeah. I hope the young folks is watching because this yes. is mainly for them. Okay, please. But please, um, yeah. so don't compare yourself to no one. Turn your social media off. Study your craft. Tell others to mind their business. Recognize your power and create, create, create. That's it. That was beautiful. Because it's 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 all about you and nobody else when it comes to like your craft. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Well, Jeremy. I'm so sad that this interview is done for now because I'm sure you'll be back. But I want to tell all the viewers to please support the Back Against the Wall initiative. Again, go on Instagram and click on that GoFundMe. Even if you can't give funds, again, Jeremy needs you know canvases, brushes, materials, and or even just give him great energy. That's always needed yes. as well. You know what I mean? Because we need this initiative to work. We need it to be stable, and we need it to you know continue to empower the community. So thank you so much. For coming on yes. the stage and telling us a little bit about your journey but it's not the last we're going to see you because she's going to be oh, creating yeah. some art here I'm gonna, right i'm gonna be in the cut real quick yeah, yeah so you know it's not a good it's not a goodbye it's to see you later so we're going to come back with another incredible artist stay tuned it's going to be amazing
Fahrenheit TV. Projections need to be blood. Next Thursday? Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Fahrenheit TV. Fahrenheit TV. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was an amazing interview with Jeremy. He's going to be back on the show later on, but right now I have the sole woman on the stage, and I am so excited to have this incredible artist on the stage. I, I, I got in contact with her through Instagram, which I love Instagram because that's how you really figure out all of these amazing artists right here in your community, and listening to her music gives you a vibe. She's so, she's so kind. I mean, the soul woman is just a fitting name. So let's just welcome the soul woman to the stage. So welcome to the stage. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. I know I'm like full of energy, but I'm like so yeah, excited that's how to you see have you. To be. Yeah. <laughs> so how are you feeling? How's your 2020 going so far? Um, it's it's going pretty well. I'm feeling pretty um good about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like it's pretty a pretty promising year for me. Oh yeah, for sure. It seems like you know you're growing, especially like in your artistic pursuits and your music. And, and I really love the vibe of everything. So I wanted to ask you, because the soul woman, right? When I hear that name, <laughs> I'm like, this is deep. Like, I know it has to have a story behind it. And you know, it's Thursday, Throwback Thursday. Can you tell us a little bit about like how the soul woman was born? Like a little bit about your journey to becoming the soul woman. Um, well, the name was actually um, an insult before it was, you know, what it is today. Um, mm -hmm. I, there was, I had a really, I was in a toxic relationship and you know, I like to, to preach, and if you know me, I like to talk. I'm deep. So, yeah, you are deep. So, you know, every time that I would, you know, talk about, you know, conflicts or whatever I wanted to talk about, it was like, oh, here we go again, the soul woman preaching to me. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't, you know, it wouldn't be negative anymore. I made it my social media thing. Yeah. So it was like... You embraced it. You know, so he, like... I could, it could never be, uh, never have a negative connotation behind it ever again. And. Mm -hmm. This, you know, it's it's my thing now. So. I love it. I love that you're embracing. You took the power back exactly. from it. And it was like, and I think that's so brave to talk about, you know, our life experiences because there's so many of us that have been through similar things and we don't talk about it. And when we do talk about it, that's how you connect with people. That's how healing works. So I think that's dope. So like, you know, now that I know how the soul woman was born and how she's, you know, confident and you know, here to just show us, you know, her gifts and stuff. Like, let's, let's, I want to, like, go way, way back. So, like, I know you've always been an artist basically your whole life. So, like, what inspired you to kind of continue with that journey? Um, well, just like you said, like, it's always been something that has been deep-rooted. So, mm -hmm. it's something, like, I can't live without it. I can't live without creating. I'm just a creator. And, yeah. you know, for me to, to not be able to do that would just, I feel like, be a disservice to myself and others. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like the creations bring people together. And it also like helps you manifest the things you want by creating in general. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to do it if you want to do it. You feel me? Exactly. And so you started off as a ballet dancer before you like transitioned yeah. to singing and doing all these other arts and curating events and stuff. So how was that, you know, experience? Well, I mean, I, it was dance was everything. It was like I was from Monday to Sunday dance. Wow, every day. Uh, I even I used to clean like the floors and the mirrors like t for free classes, and mm -hmm. I was I basically lived there. But as I got older, you I mean you get older, you know. Um, I had I did a lot of sports too, so um, I ended up doing cheerleading. I couldn't do cheerleading and ballet. Yeah, that's a but, lot to manage while you're in school. Yeah, yeah, but um the but cheerleading it was like it it was so um like. N negative like they were you know not body positive and yeah. always bringing people down so it was kind of like once I transitioned from the dance to cheerleading it was kind of like from there I went into poetry like spoken word mm -hmm. and you know poetry slams and then just last year I fully embraced the the music because music's always just been a real a real thing close to my heart that of I course. can't live without so 
you know. And it's like been, I mean, obviously when you're doing ballet, you need music. And, exactly. You know, all, you know, it just like follows you, like you said, throughout everything. Is there like um, any artist that particularly like spoke to you or any artist that sp spoke to you that made you be like, you know what, I think I want to sing as well? Um, Frank Ocean and um, Billie Holiday. Those are two of my favorites. Like, I just love the calmness and the vibe. Like, if I'm having a bad day, I can just put my headphones in mm -hmm. and vibe and I can escape to a different place, you know, through their words and their musicality. And yeah. I've wanted to give that to other people too, considering all the things that I've been through in my life. Yeah, that's awesome. And so I wanted to ask you, because I know you said like you did dance and cheerleading and then spoken word and then now singing. Was that ever a tough transition for you? Um, yeah, because, you know, dance was, it was, my, it was my life, you know what I mean? So, you know, transitioning and feeling confident, because I was, I was always told, like, oh, you can't sing, mm -hmm. you can't do this, you can't do that. So, like, it was something I always kind of put on the back burner. And being able to finally, you know, share it with everybody and be confident in it as, you know, as, as an artist in general. I mean, you got to be confident in what you're doing or yeah. it's not real. Exactly. So, you know, this past year, um, it's really helped me with my confidence mm -hmm. and, like, to know that I can really do this and bring people together while doing it. Yeah. Just it just, you know, the sky's the limit, you know. That's awesome. Has it, do you think like being, you know, creative in general has kind of helped you with, um, as a person living with synesthesia, am I saying it right? Yes. Yeah. Has, yeah. That, has it kind of helped that with, with yeah, that? Yeah, for sure. Because it's like almost like sensory overload. Like, like you're always, you know, in tune with everything. Like your senses are just, they work together simultaneously. And okay. it's like when, when you're, you know, doing all these creative things, it's, it's not just the things you see, smell, or feel. Mm -hmm. It's also the things that you don't feel, you know, the things that you can't see. Mm -hmm. it, it helps me with those things, too. So it's like an, another place for me to, you know, because this world's turning corporate. Like, oh, my gosh, you know, yeah. Gentrification, everything that's happening. It's like, so I feel like even for people that don't have it, mm -hmm. um, creativity and art, the arts in general is important for everybody, you know, for your brain, mm -hmm. you know, for other things in life. Yeah. Did you, did you just say it makes you feel like liberated and free in a way? Yeah, it does. It, 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 it keeps me away from, you know, conforming and the, and it shows me that, you know, there are no boundaries. You know, if you want to do something, you can really do it yes. as long as you, you know, I've always said that, you know, anyone can paint, anybody can do those things and, you know, anybody can sing. It's just, how you do it, you yes. know what I mean? Everyone has their own niche. Unique to it, uniqueness mm -hmm. to it, that's awesome. So, you know, like I said, listening to your music for me makes me feel very free because it's just like the vibe of it, like the the um, the um choice of like um, instruments and stuff that you use just makes me feel like I could just chill and kind of just be in my own little world, like for real. Like even oh like the visuals <laughs> that you have on Instagram, like the little spinning thing, I'd be like, but it doesn't, it doesn't make me feel like I'm dizzy, it just makes me feel like I'm just like, Wandering my own, yeah, like, but, and you need that sometimes because, like, you know, the world just keeps going and going and going. It's always routine that you just need to take a moment and relax. So, like, I wanted to talk a little bit about your music. So, what inspired you? I know you talked a little bit of, like, what inspired you to start singing, mm -hmm. but, like, when you're creating music, what goes into that? Like, if it was, like, an in ingredients to making, like, your type of music, what kind of the ingredients would you put into that? Um, I mean, a lot of the things that I've created has, like, come out of freestyling, mm -hmm. which is something I do avidly just to keep myself sane. Like, yeah. I always have a notebook. I'm always listening to new beats. I'm always making new beats. I'm mm -hmm. always creating music. So it's like, yes. um, uh, it's a real real fl freestyle flow, real calm, like, you know, chilling in my room, mm -hmm. relaxed flow. Like, you know, t I just took a shower. Mm -hmm. Now let me put some beats on and just go. And yeah. I feel like that's why I feel so free because I feel free when I'm making the music. You know yes. what I mean? And and I feel like that's mo mostly what goes into it, but it's all real. And I feel like that's why it connects with people because mm -hmm. everything I say in my music is true. Yeah. Like not one word of a lie, not one word put in there to you know make space. Mm -hmm. Every word has a, a true meaning from the heart. So. That's awesome. I love that. And um. I mean, now you're an independent artist. Have you gone through any challenges being an independent artist? Um, yeah, I feel like in in Boston in general, like mm -hmm. um, the independent artist scene is big, but I feel like there's a lot of clicks within it. Oh yeah, for so sure. So it's hard, you know, to because all these people saying the pay for play stuff, and mm -hmm. it's like 
why why should anyone we should be getting paid i feel like we should be oh, getting course, you know yeah. compensated or at least you know you know like you know uh, some type of welcome wagon i just feel like it's mm -hmm. like there's too many people that want to capitalize yes. on things that they didn't create yeah. and i feel like that's another reason why um the music scene hasn't popped that we should have been on by oh, now. Yeah, I mean, Boston sure. has so many talented artists, and it, I feel like the most difficult part is that there's so many people that are trying and willing to capitalize on other people's work, mm -hmm. and that I feel like is the hardest part. But it's also beautiful because you meet so many great, beautiful, genuine people in the in the mix and in you know the process yeah. of doing all those things. So. I feel like it's a it's a win win, mm -hmm. you know. But there are pros and cons to everything. So. For sure, and I'm glad that that you haven't let like that negativity stop you from creating and you know putting these gifts out there. And so like outside of being a singer, I know you're also a curator, right? Yeah. So like you have, which I'm like, oh my gosh, she's like multi hyphenate, like you do everything, <laughs> like that's so dope. And you started an inclusive showcase called Art and Soul. Yes. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about Art and Soul, how we could kind of get involved with that? Oh well, yeah, I'm, it's on a little hiatus right now, just due to um, going back to the drawing board and making sure like people are really included and mm -hmm. you know those you know capitalist people aren't coming in and because it's a free, it's for free entry, mm -hmm. free to perform. Um, you know, it was, you know, it was great. It yeah. was just, everyone was included. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just one genre. It wasn't, it was everybody, no matter, nice. you know, it was a place to really like um, bounce your ideas. And it was more of a networking thing, if anything, because yeah. I want to, by, you know, by, by 2021, 20, I want to see every single person in that building to have at least one collab with each other. Yes, you know, I love that. It's like, it's, it's, it's just, it's too sad to see people that have that much talent not bounce ideas off each other and really grow because mm -hmm. you can learn so much. No matter how much you know, no matter how old you are, you can always learn. Oh yeah, for so sure. So that really, you know, it, it made me real happy to see everyone, you know, vibing and people that would have never spoke to each other, yeah. speaking and laughing and that was where yeah. it really came from. And building it, and connecting together. It's not about me, it's about everybody. Yeah. I love that. I love that you created that safe space, and you're and you're working on making sure that it's a safe space for artists exactly. and creatives. So I think that's dope. You know, as one you know Thank producer you. to another, like that's inc incredible that you're doing Thank that. You. And so I wanted to ask you a little bit um, about other uh, talents that you have outside of being an artist, a singer, and all that. Like you also do palm readings. I was like. What? Yeah. What? Like, has there, <laughs> has there ever been, like, something crazy that happened? Anything that you could comfortably share? Because I know those are stuff that yeah, is private. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, um, back in June of 2018, this is the last time I'll ever read someone's palm without asking them. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I held my, my current um, boyfriend right now. Mm -hmm. um, I Shout out. I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I held his hand, and I, I read his palm, and mm -hmm. it was, like, some of the most like it was just it shocked me. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it like it, it it made me like interested in him. And like at the time I wasn't even interested like that. So it like wow. how the universe like, works. It's That's it's crazy. But I'll never I'll never invade someone's privacy like that again though. Well, Cause respect. it was it was it was powerful. But um, it really brought it really made me interested in him. And it really made me um, curious to to know you know what he's about. And nice. that I feel like that's. Just one of the most like fond memories I have of yeah. just reading people's. I think palms. that's beautiful <laughs> and honest and everything. Like wow, that's awesome. And we can't have to wait to have him on the show himself because he's yeah. also an artist as well. So gonna shout tear out it to up. him. My oh baby, yeah, we're gonna tear it up. Oh yeah, it's gonna be dope. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, what advice would you give for people who are currently trying to get through this Mercury retrograde? Retrograde. Am I saying it right? Yeah. Retrograde. Yeah. If well, the one thing I have to say to anybody that feels like they're struggling, any risk you want to take, take it now, because this is the unbalanced part of the year. And once the balance comes into, into, into play, you won't be able to take those risks the way you want to. So mm -hmm. I feel like right now, um, right now, you got to just take those risks and do the things that you normally wouldn't do, mm -hmm. you know? That's, I feel like for sure that's what you got to do. That's dope. Go I hope everybody's it. listening. We gave you free advice <laughs> to get you through this year. Take risks, take risks. Soul Woman said take risks. She's taking a risk being here, so I think that's dope. So, Soul Woman, I know you're going to hit our stage soon, right? And you're going to be performing some um, an unreleased song mm -hmm. and some songs that you've been working on. Can you give us a little bit about what we're going to see today before you get on stage? 
Um, well, the um, two unreleased um, joints, they're going to be um, just really about me and my, you know, my thoughts, you know, the thoughts that I have when I'm not speaking because, I mean, people that know me one-on-one, -on -one, yeah, I'll talk your ear off, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, in a, in a crowded area, like, I'm not really, like, a talker, so I feel like a lot of people are always wondering what I'm thinking, and mm -hmm. if you're ever wondering what I'm thinking, you're going to find out today. <laughs> yep, here's the music. So, so Woman, how do we stay connected and support you? But right before you get on, we have, like, a few seconds. Yeah, um, well, on my um, Instagram page, I have a little link tree, Thing that you know, yes, yes. <laughs> and it, I have a website um, and I have a SoundCloud, but I haven't really. Um, I just started last year, so mm -hmm. I don't really have a ton of stuff like out on all platforms. But not yet. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So I'm so excited to have you on the stage perform soon. You're gonna perform right after this short break. Um, and again, thank you so much for sharing your artistic you. journey with us, giving us some free advice. <laughs> okay and just inspiration all around. So guys, right after this short break, we're gonna have a collaborative um, performance that's gonna be so dope. Stay tuned, don't go away, stay tuned. Fahrenheit TV. Welcome to my universe and just be real, be open, be free. And it won't let go 
single thoughts and premonition I search for thrills but crave forgiveness At times it seems like night and day The peace inside is tucked away Crowded rooms, I feel alone I'm not, but at least I'm along No, there's not much more to say Pop the douce, wash down the pain Street light Glowing, glowing right in front of me. I know you there, but I can't see. Street light, glowing. Can't hide the monster inside me. I know you there, and I can't see. I can't stop the fire within. Are you my foe? Are you my friend? Then you got to let me know Why you follow me and you won't let go Do or die, I'm meant for living Forget the pain, what is forgiveness? The more I change, you stay the same Don't blame me for the games you play No black or white, but grays or poor Judge yourself or not at all False energy's a dangerous thing You whisper loud, but not a word to say Street light Glowing, glowing right in front of me I know you there, but I can't see Streetlight, glowing Glowing right in front of me I know his there is after me
were sharing that with Thank us. You. Yo, I was in the back of the gym like, run away, <laughs> run away, too fine. I love that. Jeremy, this is so dope. Oh, my goodness. So Yo, can we take it to show the audience a little bit more? I know you're not all the way done, but this is great. And you also have to put your autograph on this, but this is pretty cool. That's pretty dope. Did it anything inspire you specifically, or you just kind of was just going in your own little thing? Oh, that's a such shout out to Little Man. Like he was building his own little robot. Oh, uh, this is so beautiful. Please sign this. This is amazing. Can I just have you stand in the middle so we could just give a great shout out to both of you for taking the time to come on our show and talk a little bit about your journeys, share some wisdom and some much needed advice and like inspiration that we needed. You know what I mean? I was feeling a little stuck this week and I was in the back gym and like, this, this is so great. Life is so beautiful. So thank you to you both for coming on the show. Again, everyone, please support um, these artists. You know, you could go on Instagram and support them by not only, you know, listening to their music, supporting their artwork, but really just showing them positive energy, positive vibes. We need these artists in order to thrive in our community. And I'm so thankful for both of them for coming on our stage and gracing us with your power and your greatness. So thank you to you both. Another live episode of Fahrenheit TV premieres next month. Please stay tuned and support this amazing platform. We hope you have a great night. Fahrenheit TV.